viewers, or should I say co-pilots on today's adventure. Yes, today we're venturing beyond the realms of our solar system into galaxies far away to alien worlds. Your pilot today is a zoologist on Earth, aspiring astro-zoologist, Summer. That's me. Today we're going to watch one episode of Alien Worlds and I'm going to share what I think about it from the perspective of a biologist, a zoologist, um, someone that is really interested in evolution. I even tried a bit of a space look. Yeah, okay, don't. I know, I tried. Look, I even did the, I even did the eye makeup. You're welcome. So this new show, Alien Worlds, came up for me on Netflix. It, I, you know, it came up and I just thought, yes. Yes. I just think it's such a cool idea to take what we know about evolution here on planet Earth and apply it to how life might evolve on other planets because I do not believe for a second that our planet is the only place where life has evolved. There's got to be more. There's got to be. There are so many planets. So before we hit play on this episode, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Get off my Mac attack. Space juice in my iridescent space cup. I'm just kidding, it's, it's just coffee, but very important. Narrated by Sophie Okunido. Four part mini series depicted using CGI techniques blends facts with science fiction and conceptualizes what alien life might be like applying the laws on Earth to imagined exoplanets. So, looking at the episodes here, we've got four. Oh my goodness, this one's got a little sloth looking thing that's licking some kind of cactus that looks like us I think Oh fleshy Oh my god what are those Oh they crawl Ah Oh, I don't like that. Ooh. <gasps> that is... I didn't like that. No, I'm glad we don't have those on Earth. Oh. Whoa. Ugh. Okay, if you've got that thing where you don't like, uh, what's it called? It's it's that phobia where you don't like like lots of little holes. Not the show for you. I'm gonna tell you right now. I mean, straight off the bat, like the CGI. We've come a long way since Walking with Dinosaurs. True. See, I paid probably about forty thousand dollars my degree, my piece of paper, just to say, yes, as a biologist, I can confirm that having oxygen on another planet would be good for life to evolve there. Ooh, nice little rundown on the side there. 31% oxygen. Whoa. Wow. This has definitely given me Pandora vibes. Oh my god. They're like little fluffy, oh my god! So they've got these big bulgy eyes, so I guess they're looking out for something. Ooh, is this the danger, is it? He looks pretty dangerous. Oh! Oh no, watch out! So it moves like a rabbit? Whoa. Yes, yes, we love a chase. Who am I rooting for here? Uh, Oh my god, what's the weapon? Jesus. Oh my god, it's got extra legs! <gasps> and they stretch out. Whoa! Come on, buddy. Aw, oh, better luck next time. So the prey has got some big eyes, a bit like a rabbit. It looks like they're also equipped with something that looks like antennae from moths. And those are usually used for smelling, so they've got a good sense of smell. They've got good eyesight. So as a predator, 
it would make sense to evolve something that could get around those defenses. Maybe the predator's got really good camouflage or something, or or it secretes some kind of smell that confuses the prey, but growing an extra pair of legs. I'm interested to see uh, where they go with that next. Back to you, Sophie. right they're like <laughs> they've given them little personalities they look like they're like slithering on the ground looking for like a looking for their their match and then they coil up together to to breed I guess and they're like looking into each other's eyes like oh they're kissing oh no okay okay Ooh. never mind oh <gasps> okay look away if you have that thing Oh, and they're lifting up into the air. God, it's very complex. So they're birthing these external worm thingies that go and fertilize one, each, one another, right? That's kind of like what fish do. They release their eggs into the water. The males release their sperm. They fertilize each other and then new fish grow. But when that happens in nature, there's always predators that come along and eat the eggs and stuff. So like, it's weird that these grazers also produce these external gametes and that the predators aren't eating these little worms. Clearly they're easy to see, they're something to chase, they've probably got lots of nutrition in them. Just doesn't quite add up. Above the ground, the embryos can grow away from predators. Okay, now I'm not buying it. I'm not buying that because these predators, these predators, right, they've got six legs and they're arboreal. And they can't climb up and get these developing babies? No! That's too easy. That's too... You're not convincing anyone here. As summer ends, the fungi grow orange-coloured fruit. Some delicious little jubes, eh? Oh! Uh, rude. A bit of... Spores within the fruit oh. spread an infection. Oh, no. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I like where this is going, okay. It looks like what we've got going on here is a bit of mind control, so potentially uh, I'm going to call it and say these fungi that release the spores onto the grazers, they are changing the grazers' behaviour so that the predator catches them and eats them and then the spores get to be passed onto the predator, which is probably the final host so that the uh, the fungi can complete its life cycle. Let's see what happens. Oh god. So they've had their little meal. Oh no, here we go. Yep. Called it. Oh Not a vendetta, just an evolutionary advantage. Such complex relationships between species exist on Earth. Such complexity, but not such mystery. So One high calorie food is prized above all else. Honey. So the Hatzer call on help. What's the help going to be? A bird? Honey guides, cute. That's so nice. I want a little honey guide friend. God, be careful. Wow, what a tree.
and all I have to do is go to the supermarket and buy it in a little tub. And... The risk is worth it. Aww. Make sure the bird gets its share. Make sure the bird gets its share, yeah. She deserves it. So what are they alluding to here? Interesting, because I thought they were going to tell us about some parasites here on Earth, because there's plenty of examples. It's a weird choice to like compare the honey guide bird and the humans relationship with this relationship where the, the fungus is, is killing its hosts. Um, it's in a relationship with them, but it's not a positive symbiotic one like the honey um, bird and the humans are. The bird benefits, it gets the honey, the humans benefit, um, they get to see where the, where the honey is. Both are fine and dandy, but this relationship is quite different and I think it's important to point out the big difference there because this kind of science is, is really interesting and it's a shame to like put this in the same box as the other thing. I think I would have found it more interesting if they'd used an example on Earth where the parasite does the same thing where it kills two of its hosts because that happens so frequently here on earth yes it is kind of gross to think about but like it's also super impressive because these parasitic species have evolved so far that they incorporate two or more other species to complete their life cycle so really the parasites are like the smartest ones of all scotland cool Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe they're going to explain it here. There can be tens of kilometers of these tiny microscopic fungi spreading throughout the entire soil. The they're all around us. Those fibers to survive. Because the tree can capture carbon from the atmosphere and it provides that carbon to the fungus. In contrast, the fungi access nitrogen and phosphorus from the soil, which they give in exchange for that carbon. So really, it's a mutualism that benefits both of the organisms. Not the same as what the fungi and the lemurs and the other things were doing on, on Eden. Possibly the most extraordinary thing about this mycelial system is just how connected it is. So the fungi that are attached to the Tell roots us. of this tree will also be attached to the roots of that tree. And that tree over there. It's the internet of the forest, really, isn't it? That's why it's important to not dig up the ground, guys. So if we have one tree over there that's dying, it might reallocate more nutrients. This tree's like, what's tree? the Wi-Fi password, so guys? The tree can do better, and it sounds like a bit of a joke, but really, it doesn't function so differently from the internet, keeping all of the organisms it. connected in the forest system. So if we're gonna get a lush ecosystem on some alien planet out there, I bet you that it's underpinned by something like this massive mycelial system. Cool. I like that idea. Eden has stronger seasons than on Earth. As winter approaches, the remaining predators migrate, chasing the light. The remaining grazers. Just as the season starts to change. Ooh! No! Uh, yeah. First the little wormy thing, now the split open and God knows what's on the floor. Hmm, they're comparing the, the embryos on Eden developing over time and then finally hatching when the seasons change with these um, mayfly larvae that are, that are developing and then they finally change forms into a mayfly when the seasons change as well. These are pretty basic um, principles that I feel like people know about. I think it would have been cool to talk more about maybe how the embryo 
sack thing that it was hanging from protects the embryo from the cold while it develops. Mayflies live at most for two days. In that time, they must find a mate to pass on their genes. They have one shot, they have one chance, and if they miss it, it's game over for that mayfly. You only got one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. It's spring, and there's food to eat. The new grazers need to grow as fast as possible. Yeah, it's dumb that we didn't get to see like the embryos when they fell on the ground. In Earth systems, if there's like a mass spawning event like they had with the mayflies and they're talking about how that's when all the fish are biting, it would make sense that like on a planet like this that there would be some predators that would stay behind. When the predators are like migrating away for the winter, what are they eating? Because all of their food presumably stays behind and dies. So why haven't they evolved to stay behind and hibernate or something while they wait for the new embryos to drop out of these sacks that they're in while they're developing? Easy meal! They're so vulnerable. They just drop to the floor and wham! Food falling out of the sky. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Wondrous creatures. Oh, don't show us those. The I don't want to see those again. Yuck. Powered by oxygen. Nourished by starlight. And that's the end. Final remarks. I liked some aspects of it. The CGI. Again, very amazing. It was fun to see the different animals that, that, um, that lived on Eden. And I liked the examples from Earth. I thought they, I thought they were good. But yeah, just a few things just didn't really like line up that well. Comparing the honey finding bird with the parasites that are um, on Eden. I think they could have made a clearer parallel there. Why do they migrate away when all of their prey dies off? They didn't quite say like this is an adaptation that the embryo cocoon thing has to stop predators from getting it from the trees even though they are arboreal predators it would make sense that they would go and eat the things in the trees. Just those kinds of things. Do I recommend watching it? Yeah! I think it was pretty interesting. It was fun to pick apart what Netflix's idea of how um, life on other planets might have evolved. I encourage you to do the same. Let your, let your biological thinking uh, flow. Hope you guys enjoyed watching Alien Worlds with me today. Thanks for being my co-pilots on our journey into space. If you liked the video, why not make it official and like the video? If you really liked it, um, I would love it if you subscribed to my channel as well. Okay. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hey, well done on reaching the end screen. Can I interest you in some more? We got giant snails, we got seals. What can I get you? Yes, excellent choice.